Greetings, Internet. So I was carrying out my civic duty last week, reporting for jury service at the Seattle Municipal Courthouse. If you've ever done jury duty yourself, you probably know that it can involve a lot of waiting around. First, you wait to see how many trials there will be that week, and if they need you to be in the pool of possible jurors for one of them. If they do need you, you wait again to go into the courtroom for the selection process. And if you don't get impaneled, I love that word, you go back to the assembly room and you wait some more. In Seattle, at least they give the jurors a very nice place to wait. It's a huge room on the top floor with great views, free Wi-Fi, comfy chairs, and a lovely outdoor terrace. And there's some interesting art to contemplate while you wait as well. I became fascinated by this piece called 112 Watches, though most folks seem to walk right by it without paying any attention. It seems appropriate for it to be here since this piece of art is all about wasting time. Or at least that's how I interpreted it. The artist may have intended a different meaning. But hang on, we'll get to his thoughts about the piece in a minute. Let's just have a closer look at it first, shall we? It's made up of 112 wristwatches, arranged in a semi-random pattern on a large board behind a sheet of glass. The label says they were all synchronized when this was installed in October of 2002. The label also includes a version of the famous parable about the blind man and the elephant, though what that has to do with wristwatches is not at all clear to me. 108 of the watches are the Casio F91W model, which, as I learned from a bit of quick internet research, is considered to be something of a classic. Casio first sold this watch way back in 1991, and they still make the exact same model today 24 years later. It's a modest masterpiece of design, according to this English critic quoted by the BBC. And you can get one for as little as 10 bucks. The other four watches are a slightly nicer model called the A179W, which Casio doesn't seem to make anymore. It has a stainless steel case and band. So it's art, yes, but me being geeky me, I also see this as a really cool science experiment. Here are 108 identical watches that have been sitting completely undisturbed under identical conditions behind glass in a temperature controlled space for almost 13 years. Apparently they were all set to the same time to start with and they're all still running. The jury coordinator has been working here since the building was new and she assures me that she's never seen anyone open the case. So of course I want to know just how far apart the watches have drifted since 2002. Let's gather some data. But they just called my name to go down to the courtroom. So I got to run and I'll have to finish this up tomorrow. Hey, I'm back. So it's Wednesday morning at the courthouse and it turns out that I was one of only six lucky people this week who actually get to sit on a jury for a trial. And the bailiff is headed up here to collect us any minute now, so ironically this art for me is now about hurrying up instead of about wasting time. I decided to make a quick phone video close-up of all the watches by following along the lines of the design. Sorry the quality is so terrible, but I just needed to be able to read the times on the watches and then I can do the rest later at home. Also, I can't use the light on my phone for this because it reflects off the glass, so here I'm trying to use another little flashlight to provide some light from the side. Anyway, I got the data I needed for the video and I typed it all into Excel. I decided to ignore the four stainless steel watches because they seem to have a different circuit inside, so this data is just from the 108 identical F91W models. I decided to ignore the seconds, so I just wrote down the time shown on each watch to the nearest minute and calculated the difference in minutes with the timestamp on the video at the moment I recorded that watch. The clock in the smartphone is synchronized to the cell phone network, which is super accurate for its own internal reasons, so I'm confident that my notion of the current local time is more than good enough for this purpose. And here's a plot of the results. It's daylight saving time here now, and I'm pretty sure that's how these must have been set back in 2002, because we went back to standard time on October 27th of that year. If the artist had set them to standard time way back then, the deviation we see now would be 60 minutes worse than it is, which seems unlikely. So, hmm, it's an interesting result. If you've ever taken a statistics class, you might recognize the shape of this curve as a normal distribution. And that's really not too surprising. 
What is a little surprising to me is that all but two of the watches are running fast, with the center point right around 40 minutes too fast over 13 years. Only two of the 108 watches are running slow. And then we have one outlier up here that's off by 79 minutes too fast. Here's a blurry still of the slowest watch, and of the fastest one, and of the champ, which is off by just four minutes after 13 years. I think it might be clearer if I plot this in the traditional way. It's been 12 years and eight months since October of 2002, so that's 152 months. I calculated the implied accuracy of each watch in seconds per month, grouped them in buckets by two second chunks, and made a bar graph of the number of watches in each bucket. And that looks a lot like a classic bell curve. It's just a little bit skewed. Maybe if I had a thousand watches it would look more balanced. 108 is still not that large of a sample size. But the interesting question is, why is the distribution centered around 14 seconds per month of deviation and not around zero? Why are just two of these watches running slow? Sort of a bell-shaped but not centered on zero. The brilliant Dave Jones over at EEV blog tested the value of a thousand resistors and he got a very similar looking result. It's sort of bell-shaped but not centered on a zero percent deviation from the spec. And he also had a few outliers. The link to Dave's video is down below. Hmm, I have a guess about why this might be. Here's the crystal oscillator from a wristwatch, and this is what one looks like on the inside. You can see it's a bit of quartz crystal cut into a tuning fork shape, with some electrical leads attached. There must be a machine in the factory that stamps out millions of these little tuning forks with great precision. It makes crystals with variable accuracy that's normally distributed, but within some tolerance that's actually tighter than the plus or minus 20 part per million listed in the datasheet. But like all machines, it would tend to drift slowly out of spec as the blades get dull or the bearings wear out or whatever else might change about it over time. I don't really know what that machine looks like and I could not find a picture of one. So over the course of making a batch, the center point of the output gets slowly more and more out of spec. I'm sure they must test each crystal, or at least a reasonable sample of them, and when they start to make too many that are unacceptable, they have to stop the machine and recalibrate it. So if you buy a whole bunch of watches that come from the same production run, as I assume our artist did, or a whole bunch of resistors from the same batch, which I know is what Dave Jones did, and you test them, you'll see a distribution like this centered around whatever the machine in the factory had drifted to when those particular ones were made. But that's just my best hypothesis. If anyone watching this actually works in a crystal oscillator factory and knows this for sure, please say so in the comments below. Or if you think you have a more plausible theory, say that too. Okay, so how good is this $10 Casio watch? Casio claims it should have an accuracy of plus or minus 30 seconds per month. And this 13 year long experiment in art and science certainly supports them in that. All but one of the watches is well within the promised range, and the outlier is just barely outside of it. Casio also claimed the battery should last for seven years, but this group of watches have done much better than that. Of course, no one is using the alarm or the light. They've been sealed away untouched this whole time. So good job, Casio. Okay, enough with the engineering. Let's get back to the art and the artist. It turns out that the pattern is not really random. The watches form the outline of an elephant, and the four fancier watches form the tusk. I can see that clearly now in the photo, but in the hallway where this hangs, it's really hard to stand far enough away from the piece to take it all in at once. And it seems the artist meant it to be a meditation on differing opinions about the same thing. It gives us 112 different opinions about the current time, just as the blind men in the old parable have different opinions about what an elephant is. So this whole piece is rather more literal than I first thought. Also, it apparently was originally illuminated like this, with red, green, and blue lights from different angles casting cyan, magenta, and yellow shadows. You know how that works, right? Mr. Miller also thought that the batteries would die after about seven years, and only the colored lights would remain. But it seems the opposite has happened. Thirteen years later, the colored lights have burned out, and no one has replaced them but the watch batteries are still going strong. 
I still like my interpretation that this piece of art is about wasting time. But if my opinion about the work is different from that of the artist, then I guess he's still right that it's a piece of art about differences of opinion. So the Casio F91W turns out to be a cheap but good little watch, and I think we can safely recommend it for your next nerdy art project. As everyone else on YouTube says, if you like this video, please click like down below. Bye.